Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I am bringing you today is called Summer Inlet. It's a 4 by 6 and I painted it very recently, uh, like July. Yeah, not that long ago, although, gosh, doesn't seem like that long ago, but here we are, like, September 9th today, 8th, 8th today, excuse me, and it seems like we just got into September, I don't know what's happening. It's funny how, uh, as, uh, I think, actually, the months definitely go by quicker as we, as we get over June, you know, we get towards the end of the year, but, uh, geez, you know, it won't be that long now, uh, 2019 will be just another memory, yes. So what's the deal with this painting? You can see already it's really different. Like, hey, wait a minute. He's not painting on a dark burn umber tone. No, I'm not. You know what I'm painting on? I'm painting on a light burn umber tone. Ha 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 ha. And what paint is that I'm laying down right now? That is burn umber. And you guys have been listening to me burble on about burnt umber. This whole painting is about burn umber. This painting is comprised of three colors. Burn number. Uh, oh, maybe four. Black. I think I used black. Uh, burn number. Black, white, and yellow ochre. These are. This is the palette I've been playing with a lot lately. This is the first landscape I painted with that palette, but it was really, you know, fun. And you might recognize the scene. It's. It, I did a little like square one about maybe six months ago. That was. Um, based on the same scene and uh, basically I had like a little frame that's the hidden component you're not getting here which is I had ordered a little white frame and I guess I just didn't notice that it had like little like sculpture roses on it oh wait let me interrupt the flow here to ask you to please like comment and share this video subscribe if you haven't to do all those things because YouTube likes it the robot likes it and you can make any kind of comment you want really as long as it's not negative if it's negative hey as a matter of fact you can go ahead and make your negative comment and then you can watch me delete it so um, because I don't really need that but but you know any other comments fine uh, thanks Mike or a smiley face or a thumbs up or whatever it just lets YouTube know what's happening anyway getting back into this so this little frame it had like little roses in it well now the place I'm working now where I have my studio is this antique sh antique store in it is where I have my studio but in the front of that same building is a florist and I was thinking ah uh, I can just put this, I can make a painting for this frame, specifically for this frame. And so one thing you'll notice about this painting is it's overall lighter in tone. So uh, this is actually the sort of tone I've been painting a lot of my figure, figures on lately. I know some of you have been asking for her to see the figures and uh, you will, you will. I, I'm getting up to it. In fact, I must do photography tomorrow. I have been putting it off. Um, by the way, I think Every tone up to just a second ago was just per number, various shades per number, but it looks like I'm getting into the black a little bit now. And um, uh, I do have done some figurative paintings recently where my darkest tone is per number and my lightest tone is yellow ochre. <laughs> and that's worked out actually surprisingly well. You would be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interested in limited palettes right now I am so and that's kind of what this painting is about so I had a couple missions with this painting one it had to be lighter also in my mind so you saw the drawing stage done um, oh and do some little I actually like the things that happen I really liked the way this drawing turned out especially after I um, went through with the little q-tip which they do not call Q-tips out here. Uh, they don't call them Q-tips in here in New Zealand. They call them cotton swabs. So if you say, hand me that Q-tip, they go, what? They do have Band-Aid, though. 
I don't know if they call them band-aids. Uh, English people tend to call that a plaster. Yeah, so there's your cultural education for this evening. Um, so just reveling in all the ochre, you know, bits of black in there, you know, and um, yeah, it looks good. It feels good. And I don't believe this, there is no space or gap. Um, I didn't let this dry, so you might have seen a change, but most likely what happened is uh, somebody came into the studio or the store and um, I had to deal with it and then got back to painting, which is actually maybe that's something we could talk about because uh, I have students uh, that have hit me with this and other artists and what is it, what is this she mean, what is he going to talk about, wait, well this is that I need a quiet separate time to do my art so that I can focus and concentrate and unless I can have that then I just can't manage to do the art and let me tell you what this is, it's just a giant fat excuse so if you're somebody that's making big fat excuses like that um, I'm calling you on it I'm saying I'm calling I'm calling BS I'll keep the language clean because this is a family channel it's a family channel um, yeah I'm totally calling BS on that all right um, and you say oh, well, I'm different no, no, no. you know what um, if you, well, in a lot of cases, it's moms with kids, right? Yeah, yeah, kids are a huge distraction, but you paint with the kid playing, you know, or if you have to go look after the kid, then when the kid is occupied or whatever, get back to work, you know. Don't let interruptions stop you from working, and you'll find that if you don't, that you'll be able to get work done. So um, you'll see, like, if you see changes in light or changes in zooming in or zooming out, um, that's part of what I'm dealing with but I've been dealing with that in my last studio for years I'd be painting and then people would come in um, it's even more advanced the level of interruption I deal with now because I actually have to uh, you know help people uh, do things that aren't related or pertaining to me or my paintings um, and that's not it's not a big deal but frankly I've, I've been getting just about s as much work done uh, aside from some health issues which I, I've had with my arm which I won't I won't get into because uh, you know I know you don't care much but um, that's been coming and going but uh, uh, August uh, I think I lost almost a week and a half of work because uh, not work at the store but work uh, in doing paintings because my uh, shoulder and hand and wrist uh, was definitely um, and we're keeping the um, the content clean here so let's just say it was really messed up man anyway um so uh you know if you now the this is an extended palette so where i was talking about how i I've, I've recently done some figure paintings that were nothing but burn umber and ochre this palette extends from black to burn umber to yellow ochre to white and what do you get uh, if you mix black and white? You get a gray, and it's a cool gray. So that's like a stand-in for a blue. You'd be surprised how many um, old old style paintings. Um, <coughs> what you think is blue in the sky is actually some form of gray. It looks blue because it's offset against warm colors, which is a trick they would do because. Um, Blue is in nature a very, very uh, rare commodity. Um, most blue is actually not so much a pigment or pigmentation; it's it's the ab absence of that color, if that makes sense. So, if you see a blue flower, it's not, and you crush it up, you're not going to get um, blue dye out of it. Yeah, very interesting. So there was, uh, you know, if you wanted blue, there was lapis lazuli basically and then there was a bunch of very pale uh, blues uh, they called from smolt you know and uh, those blues were half-hearted and um, coming from quite coarse materials as well but the lapis azul was quite pretty and if you were a painter in the old days um, and uh, your rich client which tended to be the only people that bought paintings um, it's not really too much different now to be honest um, well, more common people buy paintings than in the old days. Pardon me, I'm going to have a drink of my tea. I have an itchy throat. 
hopefully you didn't hear that T going down, but if you did, please, please forgive me. Anyway, uh, say you're an artist and the, uh, the patron goes, yes, I want you to paint my blue cloak. Um, you say, okay, well, the price for the painting is X amount, and then the price for the lapis lazul is X amount, because that's how expensive it was. You're practically talking about a gemstone that's being used in oil paint, so that all changed with the advent of, uh, it's called Prussian Blue, and Prussian Blue is one of the very first synthetic colors. Prussian Blue has fallen out of favor. It's still, it's quite a good color. I mean, it has real green overtones, um, old Prussian Blue, uh, and these days in most people's palettes, it's been replaced with Thalo Blue. Uh, which is what I use. I like. I love Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue is doesn't. It, how can I put this? Thalo Blue doesn't really have green overtones, but it'll go green if you just look at it cross-eyed. So um, the other blue I use is Cobalt Blue, which, while it is a synthetic uh, color, it's a very old synthetic color. It goes back to the 1800s and Impressionism and all that. Beautiful color. I imagine based on some form of cobalt. I don't know what they do, but <clears throat> it's not like they pick up cobalt rocks and grind them up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how's that for a tangent? <laughs> uh, I am recording this quite late at night. It's like 11.30 at night on the um, September 8th, which is Sunday here. But uh, I'm not going to be able to record this tomorrow, and I want to put it up tomorrow, so... That way I know the recording's done. And I'll be on schedule because I think uh, I'm on a, like a my Monday schedule, your Sunday schedule now. And that's been working out. It's been working out. I'm keeping this channel going. Uh, by the way, I'm back on Instagram if you follow me there. In fact, in the background of this um, program where I'm recording this audio, you can see Photoshop working away to resize photographic images to more sane proportions that uh, yeah I plan on rolling out some sort of image on Instagram on a daily basis it occurs to me Instagram is really I mean you can do video stuff there and it's cool but it's really excels at just straight up pictures and I think you know I was making Instagram more involved than I needed to with like having a big picture and then showing detail shots and all this stuff I'm just gonna put up pictures yeah and share them so uh, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram it's at tonalist painter yeah I'm getting busy on a few social media platforms now yeah cuz cuz it's like the night wait it's not the 90s hold on it's not even the aughts anymore. We're going to be 2020 now, so yeah, get with the program, man. Anyway, so you can see this painting shaping up, and one of the decisions that I made, everything you're looking at is one color pass, but that was the other thing that I kind of had in my brain, is I wanted it just to be real loose and and not sketchy exactly but so I sat and looked at it for a while and uh, like there was things I would have fixed but I decided no I just like the fresh the fresh feeling the fresh quality and I want to keep it and um, I did yeah like what would I have done you ask well I could have just added a bunch more interesting stuff in the tree another layer of opaque whatever would have been pretty fun but every now and again I resist the urge you know I just had so much fun like playing the white and gray black off of the cool off of the warm uh, yeah I think it really works well it's like you know not the greatest painting I ever done oh What's this? What's scrolling by here? Oh, I thought it was going to say, please like, share, and comment, but... Oh yeah, no, that's just my website. By the way, uh, there's a nice, uh, good resolution image of this uh, painting there on the blog. And uh, the blog's a great place to go if you just want to check out my stuff, because um, 
each blog post has those zoom ins I mentioned and um, so you can see the real fracture of the brushwork and the videos there and you can scroll down and down and down and down so you could just say you could say you know what the rest of Sunday I'm going to devote to watching M. Francis McCarthy videos and listen to him burble on about whatever he does but I think I did a good job on this video and talking about this painting and I know that that's what you guys really like you like to hear about the painting because a lot of you out there you know fighting the good fight yourselves and good on you good on you um, they, some of you are actually really good painters and so I'm so appreciative of you taking time and making effort to check out my channel I'll be back real soon with another video meanwhile do me a favor please take good care of yourself your family your loved ones and your enemies and stay out of trouble.